If you ever wondered that how to create this kind of custom cast on the Farcaster network, then this is the video for you. So hi everyone, Sahil from QuickNode here and today in this video we will see how we can create custom casts called as frames on the Farcaster network. So without any ado, let's jump into it. Anyone can create a custom cast using the frames standard of Farcaster network which is based on an open graph standard, which means that any web page created using the frames meta tag can be rendered into the Farcaster feed or into any Farcaster client. So the frames meta tag looks something like this. It's fc colon frame. So it will be rendered within the head of the HTML body and anything using the fc frame suffix will be rendered within the Farcaster feed. And you can do multiple operations using it. You can add image, you can add button, you can add URLs, etc., etc. So to create our own frame, we will be using this Farcaster frames template. Shout out to this developer who created this template. And first step here would be to get clone this repo. So let's clone this repo. And once it's cloned, let's go to the directory. And once we are in it, let's install the dependencies. So this will install all the dependencies. So once all the packages and libraries are installed, let's try to run it and see what does the template looks like. So to create a custom cast or frame, you will need a web page which is accessible on a public URL. So this template uses local tunnel, which makes your local app accessible throughout the web. As you can see, it gives you a URL, which is a HTTPS URL. And using that, you can access your local host app anywhere. So to test this template, let's go to Wobcast developer frames page where you can test your frames. So let's paste the URL refresh it and as you can see this is the template frame so if you type green the screen will turn green you can also type your own message something like this and then change colors yep so this is an example and a template but we will create our own frame in which we will calculate the borrowing power based on the tokens held in a user's account or wallet address so let's open the terminal again close the server and open this repository in a code editor so here we have it in the code editor let's go back to the terminal we will need to install few more things like dot env because we will need a dot env variable and ethers because we will be working with the ethers.js library. So now let's also create a dot env file and in our dot env file we will need two variables. The variables being quicknode HTTP endpoint and nanar API key. So using the quicknode HTTP endpoint what we will do is we will get the tokens held by a account or a wallet address and we will also get the prices of those tokens using Whitnode Marketplace's CoinGecko API. The next thing is Nanar API. So to create your own frame, you'll need access to the hubs network of the Farcaster network because your frame needs to interact with the user data or uh, it needs to fetch the user data. So to do that, you'll have to run your own hub but with Nanar, what you can do is you can get the hubs data via Nanar's API. So that's what we will do. So you can register for uh, API key on Nanar and then paste your API key over here. And then you can also register for a quick node RPC endpoint like this. This is a Ethereum mainnet endpoint. And in the add-ons, you'll need token and NFT API version two bundle because we will need to fetch the tokens a particular wallet address holds and then the CoinGecko price feed data 
add-on from the Quickmon Marketplace because we will need to get the price of those tokens in US dollars. So we are all set and I'll copy this and paste it over here. And I'll also copy and paste my Nina API key over here. And obviously I won't show that in the video and neither should you never share your RPC URLs or API keys with anyone and be very cautious while pushing to GitHub or any public code sharing platform. All right. After that, we will have to set up types, uh, new types where we will declare name as a string, address as a string, total balance as a string and decimals as a string. We will need this to sort out the data which we receive from the quick node API for the number of tokens or for the tokens held by a wallet address. And then comes the index.ts file. So in the index.ts file, you can see there are some import statements and then there is a get function which will be used to get the app within the Parkaster frame feed or the testing tool. And then there is a post function which will be used to post the function calls from the Farcaster testing tool or frames testing tool to our app or web page. So let's quickly replace the code with our code and then go through it section by section that what the code actually is doing. So over here, we are again importing few things. The first thing over here is the node server, which will be used to create a node server locally and create a HTTPS link so that it can be accessed on browser or in any other apps as well. And then we are getting the types from the frame signature package, which is this. And then we are getting the token balance type, which is this, which we just created earlier. And then we are importing ethers and dot env. And then we are declaring few global variables over here where we are declaring provider URL, which will be our quick node URL. And uh, we are getting it from the environment variable. And then we are declaring a new array tokens available to borrow where we are adding four tokens, which we will use to calculate the borrowing power of any user. And those four tokens will be um, USDC, the chain link link token, wrapped BTC and wrapped Ethereum. So after that, we are declaring a new function called get wallet token balances, which we will be using to get the tokens held in a wallet. So what we are doing is we are sending the QN get wallet token balance request to the quick node RPC and then providing the wallet address and the token contract address. So API will only return these tokens balances and holdings. So the wallet address, it comes from the custody address of the Farcaster ID of the user. We will see how we get that later in the video. And then we are just filtering the data and uh, matching it with name, address, token balance decimals, and then returning token balances. And then after that, the function which actually calculates the borrowing power is get borrow power, where we are supplying the token balance array and uh, the initial token borrow power will be zero. Now the contracts info comes from this object where we are supplying the address, then collateral factor for each token, which is the deciding factor that how much that particular user is eligible to borrow based on their holdings. So we are declaring four tokens and they are different collateral factors. These are just hard coded for the purpose of this demo, but in a real world scenario or in a production app, it will be different and probably fetched from something like compound finance, then mapping the token array with contract info, which is over here. If there is no info, return zero. And then we will send another request to our QuickNode RPC to fetch the prices of each token in USD. So we are sending the CoinGecko simple price RPC request to our QuickNode RPC URL. And in parameters, we are passing the token info ID, which is the token info and the ID being the IDs, which we declared over here. And then we are also saying that we want the price back in USD, which is US dollars for each token. So then we are parsing the data, which we get from the CoinGecko API 
and uh, then saving everything in the token price variable then the borrowing power is calculated over here where we multiply the token balance with the token price and then we multiply the output with token info collateral factor which is this the collateral factor for each token is different which we said earlier and then return the borrowing power and ultimately return the total borrowing power which was zero earlier and then in this function called get user from id what we will do is we will use the nanar api to get the custody address of the parkcaster user interacting with the frame and we will get the custody address using the parkcaster id or fid so over here we have the nanar endpoint then we are passing the api key then what we are doing is we are sending a request to the nanar endpoint to fetch the account using the forecaster id and once we fetch the data we are storing it in user data then fetching the custody address from that data which will be stored in the user array and then if no custody address is found we will throw this error and then we are returning the custody address and then this is our get function which our frames tool we'll use to get the web page and oh here what we are doing is we have a placeholder background and that will go over here and over here as well then we have a post url which will be the frames post url which will be the live url using which the frames tool can send the post request to the web page and then we have two buttons button one and button two the button one will say calculate borrowing power button two will say source code which will be linked to the github gist of this exact code used to create this frame and this is just a title of the frame and in the post function we will call all of the functions which we created earlier and over there we will get the frame signature packet in which we will get the fid which we will be using to fetch the custody address and then the fid or the focus id will be stored in fid variable then the get user from id function will be called which we just saw over here and using that function we will get the data of the user which will be stored in this and uh, that data will be the custody address and then we will call get wallet token balances on that custody address so that we can get all the token balances and using those token balances we will call get borrower power function so that we can get the borrowing power of that particular user and then when all of this is executed the borrow image which is nothing but the borrow power will be updated and the frame will show the updated borrowing power and then after that we are just saying that the frame server will be running on port 3000 which is our local port and then we are serving the app using fetch and the port number let's go back to our terminal let's run npm there okay. and this is our url which will let's connect to our space here and this refresh button looks like the so in OJS just crashed or it closed. So let's run the server again. Okay, let's copy this URL. Refresh it. Okay, there it is. This is how our frame looks like. This is the calculate borrowing power text which we added. The two buttons, the one will take us to the source code which is a github gist of that exact code which we used to create this frame and then if we click on calculate borrowing power it should give us the borrowing power for this particular account which is my account which does not have any tokens so let's find a random address which has some tokens and let's find some address of usdc holder so let's go to USDC token on the scan and go to holders. Find a random address. Let's use this address. Then let's then let's go back to our code. And we will need to replace this part because that's what is fetching the custody address from the far customer ID. And because my address doesn't have any of those tokens right now, so that's why we will hard code an address which has one of those tokens. So 
let's go back let's recalculate the borrowing power and as you can see the borrowing power for this particular address is very high it's 145.2 million so that is how you can create your own frame and uh, this is just an example but you can basically do anything you can create any kind of customized frame there are tons of frames out there you can also find them on the frames channel which is there on the Varkastra network and you'll find a lot of examples plus discussions to get inspired and to get help so if you learned anything from this video make sure to hit the like button subscribe to the quick note youtube channel and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye